Hello and welcome to BIM 360 Basics. This is the final video of our collaboration for Civil 3D series. So let's review what we've done. I started off just by talking to you about what collaboration for Civil 3D is. It's the combination of Civil 3D and BIM 360 to enable collaboration in the cloud for your civil engineering projects. And then we talked a little bit about why you'd want to use collaboration for Civil 3D. For things like, do you need people outside your office to collaborate with you? Do you have multiple offices and you have people in each one of those offices that needs to collaborate? Or do people like to work from home or from the road and they need to be able to log in and do the things they normally do without having to jump through hoops? Another reason to use collaboration for Civil 3D is your markup process. If you're spending a lot of time generating PDFs or or hard copies to mark them up, address the comments, exchange them back and forth just to make revisions on your projects. What if you could streamline all that and do it digitally? So then we jumped into our fictitious project team. And we had a six member team, including a project manager, a surveyor, a designer, a civil engineer, a drainage engineer, and also a BIM manager. And I played the role of BIM manager. After figuring out what our project team was, we went ahead in and we set up a BIM 360 project. And I added all those members to the project and I made sure they had the correct permission so that they could actually access the folders and files they needed to for the collaboration to take place. Then we looked at the project from the eyes of our first person in the role-playing exercise, and that was Tom Anderson, our surveyor. Tom went into Civil 3D, created a drawing, uh, created a surface, an existing ground surface, and was able to save the drawing up to the cloud so that the other team members could have access to it, but also create a data shortcut of that surface in the cloud so that the team members could use that for sampling profiles and things of that nature. Next, we had Paula, our designer, jump into Civil 3D and create a layout drawing, but she began by referencing Tom's survey drawing as the background for her layout. She created an alignment and then created a data shortcut of that alignment so that other team members could access it. Next came Greg Rodriguez, our roadway engineer. Greg started a new drawing. He referenced in the survey. He referenced in the layout as XREFs, but then he data referenced the alignment that Paula created and the surface that Tom created, put them together and created an existing ground profile from that data. He then designed a new profile for the road and then saved that drawing up to the project for the rest of the project team to see. At that point, the project manager, Mindy, was able to take a look at the work that had been done so far. She opened up that roadway design drawing right in the BIM 360 interface. She didn't need Civil 3D at all. And right away, she was able to see some things that she wanted to change. So using issues, she notified each person of the change that was needed that each person was responsible for. And she also used the markup functionality to provide some graphical support to what she was trying to convey to the team. And one of the issues that she identified was that she wanted me to add an additional member to the project team, Hans Close. He was going to be the drainage engineer for the project. I needed to add him to the BIM 360 project and make sure that he had access to the folder. So in my inbox, a notification popped up that an issue had be, been created that I needed to address. So I jumped right into BIM 360. I added Hans to the project and used that same issue functionality to let Mindy know that I had done that. Mindy checked out the issue, saw the work that I had done, and then eventually closed it. And that was a good example of the collaboration tools in BIM 360, which augment just the capability of collaborating in the cloud through the Civil 3D tools that already exist. So what are the benefits that we saw in that simulation? We saw data sharing. Something we're doing now in Civil 3D, but we're reliant on the local area network to do it. Files are stored on the server, and the only people we can really share files with are the ones behind the same firewall that we're behind. So we're able to share projects between offices and with employees that work from home or work remotely. And we don't have to worry about a firewall, and we don't have to worry about special equipment. All we need is a BIM 360 entitlement. We're also able to share with external consultants, something that's brand new. Never before could a company just invite someone into their civil 3D project to take part in their data shortcuts and data references. That all had to be done by maybe opening up a VPN tunnel or some other method. 
Then on top of all that, we have the built-in review and markup and issue tools in BIM 360. There's no need to create PDFs or print out sheets to create markups. The files that are live and being designed on by the minute can be marked up right in the BIM 360 environment. Of course, that's not the only option. If you want to create PDFs and have them be a more official documentation of where you're at in the project, those can be uploaded as well, and those can serve as the, as the medium on which you create your markups and convey your changes. An important aspect of being able to work with the live design files is that we don't have to create copies of them to mark them up and exchange them with the different team members. One great aspect of BIM 360 is that you can keep everything centrally located in the project. You don't have to make copies to email to people to do different things. Everything just stays central and it's that one single source of truth. So when you're looking at that road design file as we did in the example in the videos, that is the only road design file. You don't have to worry about it being the latest, greatest, right version, right uh, alternative, any of that. It's the only one, so it has to be the right one. It's what we call a single source of truth. So I hope you enjoyed the video series on collaboration for Civil 3D. I hope you found it useful and informative. I hope it helps you make a decision as to whether you want to try out collaboration for Civil 3D. And if you do make the decision to take that plunge, I hope the information in there will help you set it up and get it going so that you have the most success possible with this exciting new technology. Thanks for visiting BIM 360 Basics. Don't forget to check back at BIM360Basics.com for more tutorials, tips, and tricks all having to do with BIM 360.